today we are discussing flow charts. So, what is a flow chart? First of all, let us define a flow chart. A flow chart is a diagrammatic representation of a process. Okay. In programming, it helps us in maintaining the proper sequence of instructions. So, first of all, let us see what is a program. A program is a set of instructions in a proper sequence. Okay, so, sequencing is very important in program and for maintaining the sequence before writing the program, what we do? We draw a flow chart. Flow chart helps us in maintaining the sequence of a program. Okay. Whenever we start drawing a flow chart, we write a start and then we close a start okay, to this type of box which is rounded from both the ends. See, whenever we complete our flow chart, we write stop. Again, we draw same type of box which is rounded from okay, here and here. See, whenever user supplies some values to the program, which is called input, inputting the values. Okay. So, what we do? We write input or we write read and then we write list of uh, arguments. Suppose, I am writing n1, n2, n3. It means whenever this program will get executed at that time user will supply you three values. Okay. First value will replace n1, second value will replace n2 and third value will replace n3. Okay. Similarly, whenever we want to display something to outside world, whenever the programmer wants to display something, some result to outside world, then what, what he will be doing? He will be writing print. And again, list of arguments whose values you want to display. Okay. Suppose arguments are a1, a2, a3. So, I will be writing a1, a2, a3. So, whenever this program will get executed, so values of a1, a2, and a3 will be printed or will be displayed. Okay. Similarly, when we have to do some calculation, then we draw assignment box, okay, which is a rectangular box. So, this is this type of rectangular box is called assignment box. Suppose, I am writing result is equal to A into B plus so, what will happen? First of all, this A into B plus C will be calculated. So, this will be calculated and this will be assigned to result. Okay. So, this is called assignment box where right hand side gets calculated and gets assigned to left hand side. Okay. Now, suppose we have to take a decision. Suppose we are moving in this direction and now we have to take a decision, okay, logical decision. Then we will be drawing a decision box like this. Okay, suppose this is a logical decision, it means a yes no type of decision is A greater than B. Okay. If it is yes, then I am moving in this direction and if it is no, then I am moving in this direction because either A will be greater than B or it will be smaller than or equal to B. So, this is called a decision box. At times you require some connectors also. Okay. Suppose, suppose now I do not have space here. So, now what will I be doing? I will be drawing a connector here. Suppose I draw a connector, it is a circle, I draw a connector here and I write x here. It means, now I will be starting from, I will be resuming from x. So, now if I write x and like this, it means whatever I have left here, now I am resuming from here. So, this is called a connector. Okay. 
So, so far we are discussing only these many symbols because so far we won't be drawing loops. Whenever we draw loops, then we'll be draw, we will be discussing some more symbols. Okay. So now let us start drawing some basic flow charts. See, our first problem is like this. Problem number one: Bogilal sells mangoes at rupees ten per mango. Mohan bought five mangoes from Bogilal. Now we have to draw a flow chart to generate bill. Okay. Now here we know what is the rate. Rate is rupees ten per mangoes. How many mangoes? Mohan bought five mangoes. Okay. So we will be drawing flow chart like this. Now we need not to input anything because we already know everything. We know the rate. We know the number of mangoes. So we need not to input anything. We will be drawing a flow chart like this. Start. We can directly calculate bill. We may write bill is equal to rate is ten into number of mangoes is five, and after that, once we know the bill, then we'll be printing the value of bill. So we'll be drawing a parallelogram and we'll be writing print bill. Okay, and after that, I'm writing stop. So, whenever a programmer will make a program according to this flow chart, okay, that program will not input anything. Whenever that program will get executed, it will be directly generating the value of bill, and which will always be rupees fifty. Okay, so. Normally, our flow charts are not as simple as this one. So, let us take one more example. Next one. Now, let us discuss bit more generalized type of uh, problem. Problem number two: Bogilal sells mangoes at rupees ten per mango. Okay, so rate is fixed. Draw a flow chart to generate bill. Now, if we have to generate bill, we must know how many mangoes our customer is buying. So that is not given. It means that will be inputted in our program. Okay, that will be asked from the user. Whenever this program will get executed, that value will be supplied by the user. Okay, so now we have a flexibility. Earlier we were selling only five mangoes. Now we may change number of mangoes because the user will decide how many mangoes he has to. by so now we'll be drawing our flow chart like this we'll write a start now we are not deciding number of mangoes number of mangoes will be supplied by the user so we'll be writing input input means user will supply input number of mangoes okay here we may write nm means Number of mangoes. So, input number of mangoes and m. And after that, we are writing. Once we know number of mangoes, because rate is fixed. So, what will be our bill? Our bill will be equal to ten. That is the rate and into number of mangoes. what do we do after this after this since we have calculated bill so we have to display to the outside world so we'll be using a print statement so what will we have we'll be enclosing it in a, a parallelogram and then we'll write print i'll write print bill so whenever this program will get executed okay because we are drawing flow chart then based on this flow chart what will happen programmer will write program and whenever this program will get executed at that time what will happen okay whenever programmer writes a program according to this flow chart and that program gets executed so at the execution time first of all here 
the program will ask input number of mangoes. So, the user will have to supply number of mangoes. Okay. Then, the program will calculate and then the program will display okay, print or display bill. Okay, whatever bill we have calculated that will be displayed to outside work. Okay, that is how this flow chart will work. Now, let us take our problem number 3 which is more generalized. Uh, here, Bhogilal is selling mangoes. Okay, because rate may change every day. So, rate is not given. Draw a flow chart to generate bill. So, here uh, rate is not given and number of mangoes because number of mangoes will also change from customer to customer. So, that is also not given. So, from where will we get rate and number of mangoes? So, both have to be inputted. Okay, have to be whenever we have to generate bill. So, both these values have to be inputted, have to be supplied by the user. Okay. So, our flow chart will be like this start now I will have to input input first of all number of mangoes and rate. Okay. We may specify what is NM? NM is number of mangoes. Once we know number of mangoes and rate, then we can very well find bill. What will be our bill? Bill is equal to number of mangoes into rate. Okay, basically, it is rate per mango. So, once we know number of mangoes and rate of a mango, rate per mango, then we can always calculate bill is equal to number of mangoes into rate. Okay. And uh, after that, what we do? Once we know the bill, then what we can do? We can display it, print bill. and after that we stop. Okay. So, now what happens whenever somebody writes a program according to this flow chart, this is small r, whenever somebody writes a program according to this flow chart, then and see once a program is written, so first of all it is compiled, it means it is changed it is translated to machine language okay, and after that it is loaded and after that you may execute it. So, whenever this program will get executed, so first of all at this point see user need to supply two values. Okay. The program will ask user to supply two values at this point number of mangoes and a rate per mango. Okay. Based on these two values a bill will be calculated and once bill will is calculated the value of bill will be printed here. Okay. So, now if some user is executing this program, so he need to supply two values first is number of mangoes, second is rate and soon after supplying these two values he will get a value which will be the value of bill. Okay. So, this is our problem number Bogilal problem number 3. Now, we are just okay, for, for some time we are shifting from Bogilal. Okay, we are taking one more very simple flow chart. Draw flow chart to find average of 3 numbers. Okay. So, now this has to be a generalized program which should be able to find average of any 3 numbers. Okay. Now, the question arises who will be supplying those numbers? The user will supply three numbers okay, for which he wants to find average. So, since the user has to supply three numbers, so our flow chart will be like this, we will write start and after this because numbers have to be supplied by the user. So, I will have to input those numbers, input means numbers will be supplied by the user input. Suppose 
okay i am just taking three variables n1 n2 and n3 okay so input n1 comma n2 comma n3 so i have taken three variables here n1 n2 and n3 okay see whenever this program will get executed at that time three values will be supplied and first value will be replacing n1 second will be for n2 and third will be for n3 okay so once we have n1 n2 and n3 because in our program we are assuming that our three numbers are n1 n2 and n3 at the same time we are inputting inputting means whenever this program will get executed user will supply three values for these three n1 n2 and n3 now uh, once we know n1 in our program we have assumed that numbers are n1 n2 and n3 so what will be the sum sum will be n1 comma sorry n1 plus n2 plus n3 this is quite simple sum will be n1 plus n2 plus n3 and what will be average okay i am taking a variable a v g for average average will be equal to sum divided by 3 and once we know the average this will also be a rectangular box because I am doing calculation. Once we know the average, then what will we do? We will print average because we were supposed to calculate average. So, what now what are we doing? We are displaying it print a v g. So, whatever is the value of average that will be printed and then we stop. Okay. Now again same thing whenever this program will get executed at that time first of all the user has to supply three values user has to supply three values n1 n2 and n3 okay based on those three values some will be calculated and after that average will be calculated and then average will be printed. Okay. Now, I can draw a smaller flow chart also because these two things I can do in a single line also. So, let, let me draw a smaller one start. Uh, input n1 comma n2 comma n3. I can directly calculate average a v g is equal to n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 this whole divided by 3. Okay. Since I am calculating so this will be a rectangular box and after that I am writing print average. Okay print average and then I and after that I stop. Okay, now, what I have done? I have done these two things in a single line here, okay, but I should not write like this. I should not write uh, some of the students they write like this. They write uh, average is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3 divided by 3. If they do like this, then only n3 will get divided by 3. Okay. Some of the students are doing it like this also they write average is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3 divided by 3. See, this is not a computer statement because in computer, see whatever language, in whatever language you are doing programming, you have to write in a single line. So, here first line, second line, third line. So, this is not a valid computer statement. Okay. So, your entire expression should be in continuity. So, what is the right way of doing it? I have to write like this, average is equal to n1 plus n2 plus n3 this whole divided by 3 okay so these two are wrong okay fine